Growing Squash presents many challenges for the urban gardener. Whether you're just beginning or you gave up a long time ago, here are some tips to help you deal with the squash vine borer and squash bugs. The squash vine borer moth flies around during the daytime and it will lay eggs on the stems and leaves of your squash plants. Once they hatch, they will bore into the stem and begin eating for about four to six weeks. Eventually, they will cause your squash plant to wilt and die, seemingly out of nowhere. Oftentimes, they're flowering, setting fruit, looking great, and then the next day they're flat as a pancake. What's up everybody? This is Scott from New Garden Road. I'm here to inform, inspire, and elevate you. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and spread the word. While you're at it, subscribe and get notified for more gardening action. The number one thing that you can do would be to grow some varieties resistant to the squash vine borer, such as the Tatume, the Seminole, and the Trombocino. They just seem to have a thicker, more narrow stem, which makes it resistant to the borer actually getting down to the base of the plant, which is the point at which it becomes terminal. All right, so along with growing those varieties, the second thing that you wanna focus on would be to encourage vigorous growth. You wanna provide some regular fertilization. If you wanna use a liquid, something like a fish emulsion. If you wanna do a granular, do something kinda of high in nitrogen to start off, make sure they get growing. The vines run and you want those vines to root along the way that will help it maintain nutrient uptake as it gets attacked by the squash vine borer. You want to inspect regularly for the eggs of the squash vine borer moth. I find it really easy if you take like a white lid or something like that and a pocket knife. The eggs are kind of sticky so you need the pocket knife to kind of gently pry them, scrape them off. They'll pop off and you put them in the just like that, it helps you get rid of them. You can put them in a bucket of soapy water. You can dump them in the grass several feet away. That should be sufficient. I just don't want them to fall directly beneath the plant. They can be really difficult to get to. There's several really close to the base of the stem here to really be committed to this process. Sometimes these eggs can be really tricky to get a hold of. They fall in the soil, they pop off, and you can't see where they've gone. I will take my pocket knife and actually pop the eggs on the plant. If you're really gentle and you have the right tool, you can do that. After they're popped, I'll remove them just for peace of mind. Yeah, so that's really important. You have to observe for the eggs. This is the first day this spring that I have seen them. So I'm gonna do what I can while the plants are young. When they start growing, I can't keep up with it and I don't worry about it as much. But the principle is while the plants are young, you're protecting them against infestation so that they can grow vigorously and have a chance to be resistant. While I was inspecting the plants, I found several adult squash bugs. These are different than the squash vine borer. The borer is a caterpillar that's inside the plant, eating from the inside. Squash bugs, they'll be sucking plant juices from the plants from the outside, typically on the underside of the leaves. That's exactly where I found them. So take those adult squash bugs and just throw them in the bucket of soapy water. You can do it, just put some gloves on. They're not gonna get you. This is the squash bug eggs. This is one of the cotyledons off of one of my squash plants. So you wanna be looking for those too. I also recommend strength in numbers. Plant several squash plants as many as you can fit in. Right now I have 17 squash plants. All right, one last ditch effort if you really want to get wild is take a syringe, load it up with a solution of BT, and you want to inject that into the stem of the plant. I typically targeted this when I saw infestations close to the base of the plant. That's the area that concerns me the most when I see it happening. The idea is that you inject that BT in the stem and it has to get to the point where the borer caterpillar is eating and it eats the BT just like the the other caterpillars do in the garden. When I did it last year, I noticed that spot dried up. I'm not taking anything for granted. I'm doing everything I can to wage war against the squash vine borer. Lucky you, a lot to contend with when you're growing squash, but that's just the way it is and it's worth it. Homegrown squash is delicious. What a champion that makes you feel like when you grow some successfully. I hope that helps you. Just uh, those are the things that I have adapted to do over the years to grow my squash. I went through a period of time where I didn't try to grow squash, I gave up. This is a variety of pumpkin, a small pumpkin called the Seminole, and I wanted to show them to you. They're so beautiful. I really love their leaf pattern, that coloration on them. They're interplanted here with two varieties of corn. I have six of these squash plants growing. They are one variety that I think is highly resistant. You know, I distinctly remember the first time that I ever grew this variety of squash. I had a coworker who gave me one four inch transplant that she started herself. And I planted that thing, I'm pretty sure it was in July. So the heat of the summer, not your typical planting time. Although you do have a fall planting for squash, which is really important to 
know. Nonetheless, that thing took off and grew in vine probably 15 to 20 feet easily. I really love these crops that take over in the garden in that fashion. The point I want to make though is that when it came around to November, that squash had been producing tremendously and it continued to do so. All the while it was infested, at least in part, by this squash vine borer. As it vines and sets roots, it was able to endure. That's what you want to look for. Those varieties such as the Seminole, Tromboncino, and the Tatume, they really perform well in your garden. They're your best shot at resistance. Had it not been for the generosity of my coworker, I might not have been enlightened to this possibility. And at the time I had thoroughly given up on growing squash in my garden. Just think about that story and understand that you can grow some squash. Give it another shot. It's difficult. You can't necessarily grow the varieties out there that are traditional or favorable, but expand your palate. Look at some of these other resistant varieties. It will pay off. Just understand that's what it takes sometimes when you want to grow your own food. It's going to taste so much better. I promise. I've been getting out here hunched over for about an hour or so each week hunting for these squash vine borers and these weird little bugs. Many times the moths are laying eggs alongside of me and that can feel pretty darn defeating. I know however that my persistence and passion for growing my own squash will pay off. These plants are starting to vine and it's only a matter of time before I see their beautiful blooms and fingers crossed I'm going to be grilling some homegrown squash. Alright how we look in here it looks too high to me. A little shiny or you gave up Yo, 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 trying to make a video for loose dogs. Now check out some of these other awesome gardening videos on my channel. You can grow your own squash. Keep it organic.